Coach, how was the uh, film review of the uh, <clears throat> the game? Was uh, especially the defense? Is it did it uh, look as good as it, it played out uh, on, on the uh, regular game? You know, I do like the the film review is like an always like like always. You know, you find good, you find bad. Um, you find things you want to do better. You find things you can do better. Um, and you, you ultimately, at the end of the day, you find reasons why or why not you lost the game. And you know, and those reasons. Or this game are, are pretty clear. You know, we didn't make the play that we need to make at the end of the game. Um, obviously, uh, we missed some of the big opportunities individually that we had an opportunity to make plays in order to win this game. And when you play really good football teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, you got to make those plays. It's not an indictment. It's not an attack. It's just the simple facts. When you got really good football players, somebody's got to make those plays with the why not me mentality and go out there and win the football game for your team. And, uh, yeah, don't want to single out Sheffield, but it looked like he had a drop earlier and just got – did he just lose his battle on that uh, – the game-winning touchdown there? You know, um, Sheff had an opportunity to catch a ball early in the game on, like, one of our first third downs. It ended mm -hmm. up being a knockdown pass. But those are some of the plays that we just talked about and I was referring to. I don't know, open up the argument here. But um, those plays that you can make as a player are some of the plays that can be game changers. And if you can make those plays as game changers, those are always things that can help you win at the end of the day. You know, that play at the end of the game that he gave up um, is a play that was a good play by the Kansas City Chiefs. You're talking about a match pro look with no protection. Um, we had a double team on a couple other people. Um, he had a, he got singled up. He got a triple move. And Pat Mahomes absolutely threw a laser beam um, of a throw um, on a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, and he made the play. Um, those goes against coaches. That goes against players. That goes against all of us. Um, you can't individualize that play as a game-losing touchdown um, because of how well and how prepared that the guys played. And that was the weakness in the coverage, and he found it. Jason? Hey, Coach. Um, you were When you guys drafted Calvin, you were coaching receivers. So I was wondering, is, can you recall the first moment you saw him work out in person and what your initial thoughts were back then? You know, the first time I saw him was at the Combine, and I, and I just heard that he was the best receiver in the draft that year. Um, hadn't watched much tape on him yet. Um, just kind of what you do when you got a chance to watch a little bit of college football um, from professional development when you're watching guys just play and go against each other. Um, then I got a chance to watch his tape, got a chance to watch him move, and I seen how special of a mover he was and how much he can make separation, how much he can create people to miss, and some of those things. And seeing him's downfield attack and his ability to play um, the wide receiver position. And then you got a chance to grade him and evaluate him and really get excited about uh, the potential of his joining team. At the time, I didn't really think there was any chance that we'd have a chance to get him. I didn't think we were looking for a wide out. I didn't think we were going to have the ability to target him and him for to be in that position. We thought he would go a lot higher, um, obviously, than he went. Um, and then when he fell to us, he became a real option. I still didn't believe it until a, a scout came off and told me that we were drafting Calvin Ridley on draft day, and I was able to go into the draft room and welcome him to the family. Um, and that's been a great day for the Atlanta Falcons because of how well he plays, how hard he plays, who he is as a character winner. Um, and what he brings to the table every single time we go out on the practice field or the game day. So when you're looking at receivers, uh, what are you? What technically are you looking for when it comes to, to route running, and, and how has he earned that kind of title as being one of the better route runners in the NFL? You know, Jason, when you go out there and you look for you know, receivers, you know what I learned from my time with Kyle Shanahan and Mike McDaniels and Matt Lafleur and Michael Lafleur. With all those guys, you just you learned that we look for a separation at the line of scrimmage. You know, a lot of the game is at the line of scrimmage when you're talking about getting off a of press. And a lot of the corners out here, the, the, the ones that we love and the ones that we covet, they have the ability to play press man coverage. So you got to be able to separate. And if you have the ability to separate at the line of scrimmage and create, you know, your ability to run down the field with speed and to be able to slam on the brakes and stop. Um, that's how you get the credit for being a really good route runner. So the first thing that stands out when you talk about Calvin is the ability to separate his ability to use his long speed to create down the field, and then also his ability to stop. And he has the ability to do all those things that really separates him from a lot of really uh, big-time receivers, you know, and, he, and it separates him in a different way. Some people separate differently. Some people use their body. Some people use their hands. But he has the ability to separate with his feet, a lot like Devontae Adams out in Green Bay um, and what he does and some of those things he's able to do as far as a separator. Cool. Thanks. Problem. George Henry. Yeah, hey, Coach. Uh, curious about your thoughts on the run game yesterday. Averaged uh, 4.6 yards per carry, which is pretty healthy, and uh, managed to win time of possession. What were your thoughts on looking at the tape of how the run game did? You know, George did a lot better yesterday. Um, not like our whole entire season. You know, our run game has not been up to what we wanted to be up to, but yesterday it met the standard. 
Uh, we went out, we were able to run the football, we were able to own some of the time of possession. Uh, we were able to keep the Kansas City Chiefs offense off the field, um, being able to run the football. You know, it gets a little bit skewed with the averages at time. We did have three explosive plays that throw it out of whack, but some of our runs that were not great still ended up being four-yard gains, still ended up being three-yard gains, a positive yardage in order to keep um, drives and keep third down short, which allowed us to have a really good third down day. And when you tie those things together, that's called winning football. And we're able to run the football eff effectively and be efficient with the running game that allows our passing game to really be standout. And when our passing game gets going and we're able to get manageable third downs, we can play with anybody. That's what that showed, in my opinion. And how did you think Ito looked in his role as the feature back? You know, Ito has been the feature back probably the last three or so weeks. Um, he's done a nice job of getting out there, creating yards. You know, we call him the best four-yard runner in the game. And yesterday he was able to get a couple explosive fours and get out in the open grass and make some plays. He finds holes. He has great vision. Um, he's a guy that just loves playing football, and uh, we're thankful to have him. Kelsey, how did you think Matt Hennessy graded out in his first start um, aside from the three penalties he had? You know, you put Matt Hennessy out there in a tough day. You know, you play, you put him out there against the Kansas City Chiefs with some really great D tackles. He's playing, he's playing his, his, his butt off. He's playing hard. He's playing physical. He draw a couple penalties, you know, which is always tough. But he did show signs of him becoming the heir apparent, which we all thought um, to Alex Mack and being able to go out there and be productive in this league. You know, he's one of the guys, you know, that you put out there and didn't really have a preseason. You know, he's really had not much live work at center. And so for him to go out in his first ability to live work versus the champs and, uh, and hold his own, and uh, he'll get better and better every time he go out. We're really excited about where he's going to go. And then uh, Matt Grono, too, also getting the start at left guard. How do you think he did? And do you think his future is at guard versus tackle? You know, Matt Grono has done so well for us at tackle. Um, just the last two weeks, him filling in, you know, for Caleb and going out there for a couple different opportunities. We really believe he's a tackle. But when you play that well and you want to find a way to play the best five, you have to have the ability to put Matt Gono at guard and put him out there at times. He is not as good as a guard as he is as a tackle, but he does have the ability to go in there and play and give us a nice, strong inside presence to be able to do some of the things that we want to do. Um, he went out. He played well. He played hard. Um, you know, obviously, he can play better. He had a tough matchup again yesterday with those – uh, D tackles that we talked about from the Kansas City Chiefs, and those guys are really, uh, really good football players. Follow ups, D Led? Yeah, coach, just, um, you know, the first half against Tampa was, you know, uh, you know, looked like a foreshadowed the game you had this week. How do y'all try to go back out and, and playing them on the short swing again and, and putting that whole effort together for, uh, for Tampa Bay? You know, D-Led, for us, it all starts with practice. You know, we go on a Wednesday and we have our Wednesday job through. Then we get a chance to get our mental game right. Then you talk about Thursday, we get a chance to turn up the speed and be able to run fast and hustle and play hard and try to finish. And then you talk about Friday. And that's when you go out there, you go some red zone, you do finish Friday, and you try to get this thing working and you try to get it coordinated with your players and how they want to play the game. And you're able to start games, you're able to play well, you're able to, you're able to play the game and maintain it. Um, and now we're at the point where we got to find a way to finish games and, and that's all a part about making your first half and your second half looking like, you know, I was really proud of the team coming out in the third quarter this week and having the ability not to lose an edge and not to lose the things that we lost in the last couple of weeks and show that they're able the ability to get better. And now we got to get to the point where we're able to finish these games and go out and win these games, because particularly these meaningful ones at the end. Um, when these things come down to it and we're in position to go into the playoffs or improve seating, uh, these are the games you want to win. And these are the games you're going to have to play, you know, late at this time of the year and be able to win these ones in order to, to improve those things. You want to be in those positions at some point, Elaine. So I think it's very meaningful. Mm -hmm. And then just uh, as part of that third quarter, Foyer's uh, interception, how big was that? Because it looked like they were driving. Y'all were getting ready to go back down that same street. Uh, but he stepped up and made the play on that uh, throw to Kelsey. It didn't look like they were driving, Elaine. They were driving. Yeah, um, we're on the seven. Yeah, they were on the seven. They were, they were going down the field. Uh, they were moving the ball. You could tell they came out with uh, a renewed, established ability to try to run the football. Um, they were using the hard count and the cadence to get our, our rush off sides. Um, they did a couple of really good things to get down there. Um, we were able to settle down once we got inside the red zone, um, which was another growth area for us. Um, and to let Foyer settle down, we were able to execute what we needed to do. Uh, Foyer stepped in front of a pass thrown by Pat Mahomes, picked it off, was able to show his, his running back skill set, um, getting out of field, other than his ball security. Um, but um, I was really fired up with that play being made. Um, we got to turn that into points. 
um, on our offense in order to make that a really successful uh, um, coming out party. Any follow-ups, Jason? Uh, yeah, sure. Just one. Um, you know, last game of, of the season. Uh, what's the plan with Julio uh, early in the week right now? Do, do you think he has a chance to, to suit up uh, in this last one? You know, I always do, Jason. Um, we've been waiting on him for a little while here. You know, with the soft tissue injury, um, you never want to rule a guy out, um, but you got to know what he can do and he can be able to do. You know, he got a chance to work out a little bit today. Um, we'll see what he does tomorrow. We'll see what he does moving forward throughout this week. But you could never count Julio out. Um, he's one of those guys that knows his body as well as anybody in the National Football League. And uh, we got to trust in him. We want to get him out there when he's right. Yeah, has he communicated that he he wants to play? Uh, that, that he wants to make sure he, he at least gets, whether it's just one more time this year? Uh, he has not communicated that he wants to play because he never does. He, he never does not want to play. You know, he always wants to play. Um, if he's able to. He will, and um, I know that about him for sure. And he'll, he'll communicate with me exactly where he is, like he always does, because he does a great job of communicating with me.